Hi folks, and welcome back to Conan Exiles. So today is the day that Age of War dropped. So we've got quite a few changes in the game that have happened today. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all in this video, but we're going to go through certainly some of them anyway. So let me get my UI on. There we go. And the first thing that we're going to look at is the slightly improved, slightly improved, the improved UI. So you can see here that there's been some changes done to, to these windows around here. Um, there's all these different icons here. My, my only issue with them is so you can filter on uh, weapons or armor or tools, etc. You can switch them on and off. My only issue is that they're maybe a little bit small, um, particularly for for people with some visual impairment that might not be the easiest to see. We've got the same over here in our inventory. We've got even more categories over there where you can filter. But one thing I really like is you can see some are red because we don't have the requirements to craft them and some are green to show that we do. So I've, I've got some plant fiber, some sticks and some stone so we, we can craft these. You can see that they are green and you've got everything you need. That's quite a nice feature and it even tells you how many? So we could craft 43 pairs of gloves with the fibre that we've got at the moment, if we so please. But yeah, that, that's quite a nice feature, quite like that. Um, one feature I'm not so keen on is they've revamped how this is displayed. So by default it used to be custom and you used to just be able to move things to whatever slot you want. Now we have by name, so alphabetically by name, heaviest first which we had before and is and it's often useful to quickly see right what's the heaviest thing what can we get rid of and the other one is no sorting so no sorting does allow you to rearrange your stuff and we can move that about so that that is like like what custom was before however like if i move all these things down to the bottom row and then change that to heaviest first so we'll have to quickly get rid of right we need to get rid of that plant fiber okay if we go back to no sorting it stays like that, it doesn't revert back to how it was before. Not keen on that, I liked to have my various tools along the top bar, I liked to know where things were, so I could quickly get them. But it was also nice to be able to flick to heaviest first to get rid of heavy stuff and then go back to my normal layout, so that's not so keen on that feature. Okay, um, one other feature we'll look at is they've added a quick, I don't know, is it quick sort? Quick stack. So you can see in this chest, we've already got crystal in it, we've already got volatile glands in it, and we've already got weather skulls in it, and I have them in my inventory. I can now click one button and move all the things that were in this box in my inventory straight into the box. So you can, if you have certain boxes for certain things, you'll just be able to go straight up to them, hit Q, or quick stack, and it'll go straight in. The other thing to show is that these buttons are now always going to be in the same place. So if we go up here, we've got a quick drop, quick stack. If I come away from there, the quick stack is gone, but a quick and drop are still in the same place. So they've unified the location of the buttons. The buttons will always be in the same place and do the, the same thing. So drops there, we can now split stack. Another thing I don't like so split stack is now right click, so I can take that stone and right click it and it'll half it and then half it again, half it again. So you can do that really quickly and stick it all back together. But the great thing we used to do before was the precision split, where we would drag it and drop it and we would get the box that would say how many exactly you wanted. It's gone. Funcom, please put that back again. Please, we really, we really want that back. So yeah, okay, that's that. Um, in doing that, there is no longer going to be, they used to have the option, like if you clicked on an item, it would have other, and then it would pop up a little menu, you could dye it or repair it. That's not going to be there anymore. And one of the things they've done to fix that, is that dyeing is now moved to the dyer's bench. So A, to help unify the buttons, and the other thing is to give the dyer's bench a bit more meaning. Because once you've crafted it, it's a big old bench. And what is that? Two, two and a bit tiles. 
uh, just over one. So it's, yeah, it's a big old bench, but once you've crafted it, you might craft a couple of dies and you don't really need it again. So this way, you're going to use this item die slot. It's got a thrall slot, but I don't think a thrall will make any difference. So we can still create our dies as before. We can still make them in here. But we can now... We have to die. So if I put my helmet there, which I've taken all the die off of, if I take... Whoop, I've, I've rearranged all that. If I take the white die, so I can't... I can't die it in here at all. There's no way of dying it. So the only way to die it... Which that? Is to put the item you want to die in there, hit the die button, and then you get the same old menu come up. So let's die that blue, that bl uh, white, and that blue. That's it. And then I'm going to take that off. Close the back of my head and we've got a dyed helmet again. So yeah, dying has been moved to the dyer's bench. So it gives it a bit more meaning again. Uh, what else has changed? The battle pass has changed. The challenges has changed. So before we used to have, I think it was five or six challenges we could do and they reset every 24 hours and um, you had three chances to re-roll them as well. Now that has been replaced by doing stuff in the game. Um, let me see if I can get it to work because I tried it earlier on. Let me go over here. So doing stuff in the game like killing enemies, harvesting materials and building stuff just doing normal everyday stuff in the game will earn you battle pass xp so if we look at the challenge yeah so it went up from 111 to 115 just from hitting two rocks there also the the things you do the things that will give you more xp in the game will give you more battle pass xp as well and then you also have these three weekly challenges now so they're on a seven day timer so they're they're bigger things so such as defeat three demonic animals, defeat five giant creatures, and defeat a world boss. So, uh, five world bosses. And when you complete any of those, it'll give you a huge amount of XP that I believe is enough to give you two and a half. It's like 2,500 XP. So it'll give you two and a half levels of battle pass challenge XP. So that that's different. We're going to have to play with this to see how it's going to work out. Um, the ability to, to cheese your battle pass by by adminning in stuff and doing stuff on the old system, on the 10 times multiplier, that's gone now. We're going to have to play with this for a wee while and see how it's going to work. I'm sure Funcom will be monitoring it and can tweak the tweak the ratios to, to make it work as well. Uh, of course, we've got new got new battle pass, some awesome new stuff, including there's a build set in here. Yeah. Singarian camp walls. And uh, where's other pieces? There's curved walls. Uh, tents. Weapons. Placeables. There's inverted curved walls. Gates. So it's it's kind of to make yourself a little fort. And there's a, your gate. A couple of armor sets and stuff like that as well. So yeah, some interesting stuff in the battle pass. Okay, right. Next thing. Followers. Followers have changed. So if I look at Delencia now, now we have this options down here. Um, I think the invent this diet used to be in this section, but no longer do we click on them and use a radio wheel. There's no um, interact, I can't remember what it was, behavior and whatnot is not there anymore. That is now all set in here. And the good thing is, not only can you set it, you can see what it is set at. The old system, there was no way without using a mod of telling what their previous settings were. But you can see here, we can enable or disable the irritate perk. We've got combat tactics, whether we want them to hold, chase or withdraw. And then we've got their behavior when they're following. So defensive is a bit like the guard me, where they will not do anything unless attacked. Uh, aggressive is when they'll go out and attack everything they see and passive is they'll do nothing until we tell them to do something and then you've got the same options for when they're guarding whether you want them to be passive, defensive we've got follow distance, attack distance and chase distance 
all set up here and we can see what that's set to. We also, let's see, let's get you following. We also have the options now, so when we're, they are following, we can hit the button and we can have the option to defend here, stay here and defend, flee so that they'll run away from danger and go here. So the, the whole move thing we had before, but that flee and defend thing, there's no, there's no stop anymore. But yeah, that, that has got to be interesting and we're going to see how that works. Right. That's a quick run through over quite a few of the sort of UI and little cure quality of life changes that happened in the game. Next thing we've got to speak about is one of the big features of the game. And you can see that big beam of light way in the distance. And that is the Sacred Hunt. It's a limited time event that's only got to happen for a short period of time and then it'll go away. And it's called the Sacred Hunt. But before we can start the Sacred Hunt, we have to get ambushed and we get ambushed at night time. So it's, what is it, it's 18.30 at the moment, in-game. So it's going to start getting dark soon, and I will go and wait for it to get dark, and then I'll bring you back when we get ambushed. And I'll, we'll take it from there. Okay, see you soon. Oh, there is the roar, and there it comes. So... Out of the darkness, we've been attacked by a were hyena. So let's just take it down. You can see they're not not hard to fight at all. Um, at lower levels, they're they're lower lower HP than a hyena, a standard hyena. So if you the can only get attacked after level ten, and even at that level, they're they've got like. 50 HP or something, something, something like that. Obviously that one had 300 odd because we're level 60 here. But there we go. You get one attack a night. And as you can see, it has gnarled fangs. It's a, I think it's a random between two and four gnarled fangs each. And you also get this hunter satchel. Let me just shift everything out of the way so we can see what we'll get. So we've got three gnarled fangs at the moment. Open the satchel. Uh, we didn't get any more. We got a stone skinning knife, some shredded roast, another water skin, some basic aloe extract, and a couple of gold coins. So, not interested about those items, but you also get this flesh map. A patch of flesh with a map carved into it. And if we click more info, you can see, like a whisper, at the back of the conscious rose the vague memory of the name of an ancient god of darkness and primordial fear, to whom... Once both men and beast bowed, and those children, men whispered, still lurked in the darker corners of the world, beyond the Black River. A map clutched tightly by true hunter of Jebel Sag, scrawled into the patch of fletch, hastily scraped and not very well preserved, it is still somewhat possible to determine the marked location. So, uh, if we use that, we can see it, and it's got... A location carved into the flesh there of a location that will probably be quite familiar to most people because this is up this is like the den up here um, and we've got like Neeb's door over here and then we've got the the guy at the Jebel Sag entrance who used to teach us the Midnight Alchemist is just around here and if we look over in that direction there is a very bright beam of light Going all the way up the sky again to, to mark the location, which we can see from very far away. So bring it up on the map, and it's this is the location here. So that's where the, the guy for Jebel Sag is. I believe that's Neeb's door. That's the, the den. And we want to go to that area just behind it. But I happen to know that before we go there, we need more fangs. So we're going to have to get ambushed a couple more times of the night, which I will go and get that done. And then I'll meet you over in that location, and uh, we'll we'll go on to the next part. Okay, see you soon. Right here we are. There is the guy that would take us to the Jebel Sag Midnight Grove dungeon, the little altar behind them to make the potion. Behind us over there is the Neeb's door. So we're we're here in uh, D8, facing that way. But if we go around the back...
back, you can see the beam of light coming up the top there. Let me jump over here. Nope. Okay, let's go around a bit further. There we go. Up here. There we go. We can see it now. This whole new area has been put in place. Okay, so let's get the horse. Let's go and have a look. So there's a bunch of these guys that, although it says E to talk, you can't actually talk to them. But there is two people you can talk to, the Bloody Tongue of Jebel Sag and the Master of the Hunt. So if we speak to her first... Another pilgrim enters the Savage Garden. Right. Before the before, Jebel Sag reigned over all the earth. Over all beasts, including humankind, all predators and prey worshipped him and spoke the same language. Even now, separated by ten thousand tongues, even now, when the corruption of civilization peaks, the god of all beasts walks among us, sometimes as a man. Sometimes as an animal, and you will know him by eyes that burn like yellow coals in the dark. The smartest of animals who remember the beginning of all things still worship him, as do the men and women who still feel the primal fever, the quickened heart. The blood-soaked drum of the hunt. Animal and human. They are descendants of Jabal Sag's loins. Yeah. The flesh remembers. The blood uh, what illuminates. What are you doing here? The hunt is Jabal Sag's most sacred sacrament. We hunt for his glory. In this time of the gathering, we hunt to be his next chosen. Perhaps you have already faced the ferocity of Jabal Sag's chosen. Those most devoted to his hunt lope in the darkness after the horizon has devoured the sun. Far from the blasphemy of civilization's walls. Slay these chosen for the trophies that will buy you his favor. Search the lands for his champions three. Just the mammoth guarding yeah. a frozen temple. The rhino in the shadow of a sea vessel locked in the sands. And the panther on the shores to the east. Each champion a vicious paragon of its kind. Okay, so that was the clues to the three champions that we have to find. The mammoth, the rhino and the panther. Seek a mark of Jabel Sag, set a lure, and draw a champion to you. To properly consecrate the combat, strip yourself of the obscenity of armor, and adorn yourself with the painted sigils of the Beast Lord. Now, strip yourself with armor and adorn yourself with the paint of the Beast Lord, so we have to fight them naked and with a special war paint on. From the flesh of these champions, carve and take the brand that marks them as Jabal Sags. Combine their holy flesh with the lore upon this altar. Drink the nectar we have prepared and ready your soul for an audience with the King of Beasts greatest champion. We have to get marks from each one, combine it. Um, with another lure and then take a potion to teleport us to go to the, the greatest champion. The flesh remembers. The blood uh, illuminates. Okay, so I think I think that's basically what we need to know. Um, if you don't want to get ambushed and get attacked during the night, you can leave the hunt with this option here to, to opt out of it. But we'll say goodbye for us now. Now, if we check this guy... Lovely weather for a hunt, eh? Bring the offerings harvested from the hunt to honor the Prince of Beasts, Jebel Sag. 
In return, I will give goods to aid your hunts. Defeat Jebel Sarg's nocturnal hunters and champions. Collect the trophies that bring his favor. Oh, collect the trophies off of them, and then he'll trade them for items. Happy hunting. And here's all the things he'll trade us. So, there's the war paint that we need. The, the do the Jebel Sag. There's a champion's lure that we need. So you can see it's ten fangs, uh, or gnarled. What are they called? Yeah, gnarled fangs for that, and it's one for each war paint. So I've I've killed four of them and got three each. So I've got twelve fangs to get us started. There's the potion that we'll need, and to defeat the end boss or to get teleported to the end boss. Um, and then this is the items that you can get. So the bestial regalia is the the cloak, the the fur cloak that you've maybe seen several several people wearing. Um, feral claws weapons, a skull war hammer, a throne of Jebel Sag, uh, a spike trap. So the spike traps that you see in various dungeons, stuff like that, you can get them yourself and use them for your base defense. A basin of Jebel Sag, which is like a feeding bowl. A statue of Jebel Sag, a Lemurian brazier, red bioluminescent mushrooms, so you get red and green bio mushrooms that you can that you find inside the Midnight Grove dungeon. That you can get them yourself and use them to decorate your bases with. Um, wall paint, a mammoth wall paint, rhino and panther wall paint, um, a wire hyena wall paint, the Embel Jebel Sag icon and a were hyena hunter pet that you can have your own were hyena as a as a pet right but to get started we're going to need a champion's lure so we'll trade them for that and i'm going to get two war paints one for me and one for delincia right so next now that we have those items we need to go to the locations of the one of the three champions so the first one that she mentioned was the Mammoth, and the Mammoth is up um, near the Frozen Temple, so up here at the Temple of Frost. So I'm going to head up in that direction, and I'll meet you up there. Okay, here we are. There's the Temple of Frost, and if we just ride over here, you can see this item here with a is it painted on? A, a very rudimentary picture of a mammoth painted on in what looks like blood and the Jebel Sag logo. This is where we put our uh, lure. Uh, let's let's get the horse out the way. And then I have to mention something that I forgot to tell you all about. Right, so you can stop following for the moment. Because, if I go to settings, and then go to gameplay, if we scroll down a little bit, we have auto face forward on attack is now being added into the options. So the, the issue we had with combat in the previous game was once you started a combo, you were locked in that direction until you finished it, stopped, and then turned. But people didn't like that, but now we can just move our camera around and the attack will just follow me around like it was before back in the good old days okay right we're up up here obviously it's cold up here and we have to fight it without armor on uh, so we have to take our armor off let's see so we're we're cold it's not too bad but i did bring some spicy food with us as well so you can always use spicy food just to warm you up a bit and uh, then we need to put on our war paint Quick. There we go. We've got the war paint on. That gives us the challenger buff. Uh, and if we go to stats, the challenger buff just says charisma increased by three. But what it actually does is massively increase your damage that you do. So the, the boss, when we spawn it in, will have like over a million health. And without, without with your armor on and the war paint you can still damage it, but it'll take you weeks to be able to kill it. So you take your armor off, you put the war paint on, and you get the challenger buff, which will massively increase your damage. Um, it did work in the 
in the PTR demo, if I take Delincia's armor off and give her war paint, well, I'll need to equip give her war paint. Hopefully, it'll still work for her too. Right, so let's see. We need to put the lure on our hot bar. And then you put that on top of here. You see it turns green. There we go. And a cloud of smoke will appear with the eyes boring out of it. And here it comes. So it's three skull, three skull mammoth boss. Uh, you can see it's got 1.03 million health. But yeah, she is doing damage. It has the same attack pattern as what a normal mammoth has. So let's say Gorgothia Earth Trembler. Watch out for that AOE. Oh, but yeah, we're doing. So Hosav's not showing the right the right numbers because it's only saying it's just doing 400 damage, but it must be doing a lot more than that. Down to 30 odd percent. Whoa. Take that. There it goes. It's down. Well done. Heal up. Right, let me get my armor back on. Um that, that, that. That's my armor, just to keep me keep me in the warmth. Right, let's go up to it. You can see that we got 17 gnarled fangs from that. So you get a lot more fangs from the, the champions than you do from the the normal wear hyenas, but you also get brand of a champion. Proof of felling one of Jebel Sack's champions. So that's a material we're going to need for crafting later on. So we'll take that. Um can and skin it till just I think you can just get the normal. Yeah, elephant hide, flesh, eh, fur, yeah. tusks, advanced weapon repair kits, thick hide. So. Keep that if you so wish. Right, where did I park the horse? Over here. Okay, so that's the first one done. We now need to take those fangs back and go and buy another champion lure so that we can do the next one. And I'll see you when we're at the next location. Okay. Okay, we're at the next location. Now, it said that the Rhino was at the, a landlocked ship. So that, of course, is the Black Galleon. All the way over here. We're on the north side of it, just beside Bilgewater Break. And uh, let's see if we can get a, vitali a fatality to work. So another new feature is you can get a random chance of getting these guys down to one XP and daze them. Not in those. Not in that one either. Okay, so. Didn't work there, but you can get them and they'll get dazed and they'll start like rolling around and then you can walk up to them and do a fatality, which will give you a, like a, almost like a Mortal Kombat style animation that will be nice and gory. Right, so she's still in her war paint without her armor, so let me take mine off. Let's put the lure down there take my armor off I've still got my war paint on there we go challenger buff is up and there we go so facing to it on the north side of the, the ship ships up there we have this we can put our lure on there and wait for it. here's the eyes and the smoke and this is the rhino it is. All, all scarred. I think we go around the other side. Yeah, it's got the Jebel Sag mark on it. And again, the numbers are not right because it has got 1.03 million health. I'm sure Hosav will update his mod soon and we'll get the number corrected. Down it goes. Right, so he's got 15 fangs, he's got the brand of the rhino, so that's the second one. Uh, and if we harvest him, again, he'll just have 
Thick hide, rhino hide, exotic flesh. Not a portion of natural learning. Lots of them. They're kind of the same as what uh, a normal boss would give you. And some glowing essence as well. Let's just throw them away. Yeah, we'll throw the rhino hide away and the thick hide. Yeah, we'll put our armor back on. There's a horn. Get rid of that. Okay, now we're ready to go and get another champion's lure. It's a shame we don't have enough to get all three at the same time. But we'll get a th another one. And then we'll go to the third champion location. Okay, see you soon. Okay, we're at the third location. So the panther, it said, was over on the east. So this one takes quite a bit of finding. Because it's not quite as obvious. Because there's an awful lot of east over here. But where it actually is, is just this corner up here. So that's Jamila's Liberty there that we're looking across there. And just over here, there it is, right there. Uh, I guess that's meant to be a panther on, on there, but it's difficult to see, especially in the wet. Still looks more like an ape to me, but never mind. But yeah, that's where it is, right on that corner there, where that little lump is there. Okay, so, oh, I better take my armour off first, and then put the lure down, and get ready, here we go, set of eyes and smoke, and here comes the panther champion. Again, he's got the branding of Jebel Sag on his shoulder there. 1.03 million health. Zybola Marrow Drinker. Interesting name. God, take you. Oh, it's got dangly bits under his tail there. Then he goes. Okay, so he had 16, no, 18 gnarled fangs. I think that is random what you get and brand of the panther so that's the three brands now the mammoth the rhino and the panther Got that we'll skin them just for good measure uh, a bit of shade bloom feline pelt felt flesh uh, fangs yeah nothing nothing too exciting we'll keep a hold of the shade bloom that's always handy but the brand is what we want and more fangs okay let me get my stuff on then we'll go and get the horse and then we have to go back once again to the hub so we can make the the, the lure that we're going to need for the final champion okay see you back there right before we head back to go and craft the grand champion lure I thought I would just pop over here to Sipta and let you see the various locations and where they are on the Sipta map too so the same process happens, you'll get ambushed at night time by a were hyena, you kill a were hyena, you get off its corpse a flash map. And if we use the flash map, you can see it's a slightly different location, but it's a pretty easy to spot location with the concentric circles there, uh, with the areas going off the so So that is the Tower of Sipta, right in the middle of the map, and you can see it is down here in kind of the southeast corner. So if I bring up the map, there is the circle with the tower in the middle and we're down on this plateau. You can kind of come up here and up here on this plateau in the southeast. And if I turn around, there it is. So I believe this used to be here before, but I had a, like a, I can't remember, maybe a three skull skeleton boss on the end of it here. But now it's been turned into the Jebel Sag area. So there is the... Oh, it's covered the barons. There is the bloody tongue of Jebel Sag, who will talk to you and give you all the stuff as before. And there is the master Lovely of the hunt, who will talk to you day. and sell you the war paint and the champion's lures. And the potion of the hunt as well, with the teleport. Okay, right. I'm going to go and take you to the first location now. Okay. Okay, so when you speak to her in the hub, and she gives you the clues of where they are, she says that the mammoth is where the elephants die, which doesn't take a great deal of thought to go, that's the elephant graveyard, 
And we're actually right over the top of the elephant graveyard marker. You can just see it there. And here, let me see, there's this kind of, kind of the boss one over there, which is northwest of us, looking at the minimap. And you come down here and you've got these bones. And there is the, the I don't know, what, uh, altar to the to the mammoth. And you can see the mammoth painted there. So that, that's where it is, in the elephant graveyard, just north of the Tower of Sipta. Okay, the second one we're going to go to is, I believe, the Panther. And the Panther, it says, is in an island to the northeast. So I'm going to head over there, and I'll see you when I get there. Right, we're close to the second one now. You can see the bridge behind this. We're over here in the island in the very northeast corner. And the bridge is called the Gash, or maybe this, this ravine is called the Gash. But there is a bridge there that you can get across. There is a corrupted child of Gula or whatever. It just stands there at pools. But if you come straight across here, and then slightly to the left, and down here, we see there is a there's a camp down there look we can see oh it's the rhino is it is that the rhino i think that's the rhino yes that's the rhino one in the northeast not the panther apologies okay so that's the rhino one there so now we have to go all the way to the opposite side of the map uh, can't come out here let's get a bit one. Uh, all the way to the other side of the map to get the next one so i'll see you over there Okay, here we are. So you can maybe tell if you know this map by the horrible location that we are down here on the Isle of Dusk on the right hand, the left hand side, sorry, the west side. Um, there is the spit and we've just come south down here to the area that's kind of closest to this black area here. That's where we're actually going. And you can see there's like a little entrance there, a little archway that you can get in. So let's just head in here. All the darkness and bits of ash and everything going all over the place. Right, let's get off. You need to be a little bit careful because there's like sand beast dog things around here. But just down at the bottom here, here we go. The panther and there is the altar. The place your lure to get the panther boss. We will spawn just in here in this ash land area. Okay, that's the three from Sipta, and then you would do the same thing, you would take those three back to your central hub, craft your Grand Champion lure, use your potion to teleport and fight your Grand Champion. So I'm going to head over back to the Exiled Lands, and I'll meet you back ready to get the Grand Champion lure made. Okay, see you soon. Right, we're back here again. So... If we come up, if we actually go to this altar, this is where we're going to craft it. There is the Grand Champion Lure that we need to, to summon the Grand Champion. And it requires a normal Champion Lure and then the three brands. The brand of the Mammoth, the brand of the Panther, the brand of the Rhino. So we've got them, we just need to get one more standard Champion Lure. So speak to the Master, hunting. Trade, Champion Lure, Trade. Then we can craft that in here. So we've got to put the lure and the three brands in. Turn green. We can craft that. Grand Champion Lure. Okay. Throw that bit of flash away. Now, the thing we need now is the potion that will teleport us in to like, it's like a special instance of the uh, Midnight Grove dungeon. We will fight Welcome, the Grand Champion. So we need a potion of the hunt, which is three fangs. Trade. And you can see that it only has a one minute spoil timer. So we're going to grab it and we're going to use it straight away. And here we go. We are teleported in. And we come in here. This looks very familiar to anybody who's done the Midnight Grove Dungeon. This is basically where you would fight the last boss with the pool of blood in the middle. Except this time, a special instance because it's a one one boss fight and there is a... 
you can see a paw print, a bare paw print on the on the slab there. Right, so let's uh, remove our armor again. And we're ready to take on the big boy. There's the eyes. Red smoke this time. And there he is. So he is a wear bear. 1.74 million. Ooh, Delincia's getting annihilated by him, so maybe it doesn't work in here. as we can. Well, our health is staying pretty much solid, so I'm not sure what happened there. Was our health down really low before it started? It's almost down. Whoops. Oh, he's done his weird ghosty, ghosty move. Gura Soul Renderer. There we go. He's down. Oh, that classed as a world boss for her. Champion. Okay, that's strange. I'll have to watch back the footage to see what health she started at. Oh, what's this? Blood of Prey flows so sweet drink. Never really listened to that. I was too busy concerned about Delincia. I'll have to watch back what it says. Right, so he has 43 fangs. So much more fangs. Which is up to 60, but... If we skin him, let's see what we get. Bunch of demon blood, and there was a tablet there, shade bloom, more demon blood, bestial memory, more demon blood, me. glowing essence, come on, alchemical base, okay, got a lot of stuff, there we go. So we've got a bunch. Oh, we've only actually got 68. We must have only got a little bit of time. We've got loads of these bestial memory things. Again, they only last like under two minutes. So let's chuck them away. We've got Shade Bloom. Ah, there it is. The Tablet of Power. But every time you kill them, you'll get a Tablet of Power. And a Tablet of Power gives you, I think, 60... Um, knowledge point so let's let's just try we've got 29 at the moment let's use this 89 so yeah it gives you 60 more points to buy buy more stuff with uh, what else did we get we still don't care about them a little bit of alchemical base and some glowing essence but yeah lots of fangs so that's him down uh, can you pick these? These are the bioluminescent mushrooms I was talking about. Oh, they just turn into normal shroom animas though. But yeah, you'll be able to get these from the, the vendor for your base. The red ones and I think there's green ones as well. Not in this room, but... Okay, let's teleport out of here. And did it take us back to the hub? It took us back to the hub. Okay. So there we go, that is the basics of the Sacred Hunt. So you can get the Wear Hyenas of a night time, but you'll only ever get attacked by one of them. It doesn't matter what multiplier you have on the night time, whether it's really fast or really slow, you'll only get attacked once. You'll get uh, a couple of fangs off of them, but you can buy, once you've got enough, you can buy Lovely weather for the a hunt, eh? war paint and the champion's lure off of the master of the hunt here to allow you to go and fight the champions where you'll get more and if you do all three you can do the grand champion and get even more so you have to build up your gnarled fangs collection in order to buy this and yeah a thousand fangs for the bestial regalia that's that's probably the coolest item out of the lot but yeah that's gonna be a lot of fangs to to get them you're gonna have to rinse and repeat this quite a lot uh, then you've got all your weapons and your placeables and stuff like that as well but yeah, it's a cool little feature. Um, there is an a, an option. Lindsay's running about the wall. There is an option that you can do this, do the the hunt in a different way 
and and you'll end up being able to get the werebear as a pet follower instead. But won't go into that today. We're, we're running long enough as it is. Um, there is obviously other features to do with the chapter four. So we, we never actually got to see any of the fatalities. But if you're fighting humans, you can have fatalities. So we'll we'll come across that as we go through our videos and there's also updates to the purge so the high level purges now will also have invisible thieves that you will use the same as the invisibility spell they can sneak up to your base and pick your locks and get through the door that way there is a golem purge wave where golems with exploding jar heads will attack your base and blow your base up and then the worst one of all is the i think it was it's called storm caller or something like that and it's a, a guy who will summon a meteor storm and the meteors will rain down on your base and basically one shot your anything beneath it. So whether it's a base piece or a or a thrall, the, the meteors will hit it and I think it will one shot it. And the only way to defeat that is to run out to the storm caller NPC and kill him to stop this stop the storm. So some very scary high level purge stuff that I'm not really into at all, but that's the, the other big big features of the Age of War Chapter 4. But that's going to do it for today with my really cool war paint on. So I'm going to nip over to Sipta and uh, do, record the locations in Sipta and then I'll insert them into the into this video. But for today, that's all. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.